everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. And today we're looking at one of the most common hitchhikers you'll run into in the saltwater hobby, Asterina starfish. We'll go over what they are, where they came from, are they good or bad for my tank, and ways you can get rid of them if it comes to it. Thank y'all for coming and let's dive in. Asterina starfish are very tiny, only a couple centimeters long. They're white and gray in color. Some even have blues and reds and oranges on top with their number of legs, in most cases five legs. You can find them on the glass, in the sand bed, on your filters, and rock. They explore any nook and cranny that they can find food. Like any other starfish, they are omnivores, so they're going to be looking for two main foods to get nutrition. It's going to be algae, so hair algae that grows on your rocks, diatoms in the sand, macroalgae, even cyano. They will eat it all. The second food they want is detritus, so leftover food, fish waste, inverts, exoskeletons, they want it and they're going to eat it and they're going to find it all throughout the day for you and clean it up. And the third, some people say, is coral polyps, but we'll explore that in a little bit. So these little guys are great cleanup crews for your saltwater tank. They are workhorses just like your snails and your hermit crabs are. Now, how did they get into my tank? Well, they are a very hardy hitchhiker that is tiny too. So they typically come from your live rock that you add to the tank. Even if you don't see them on the rock, whenever you're shopping in the store or ordering it online, they are in the tiny holes and will come out once the rock is settled into the, the tank. They can also be on corals that you buy. A lot of corals have stony shells that they can be on, frag plugs they can be under, and they are going to hang on until they get into your tank. They can even travel on something as small as a hermit crab shell for quick navigation. Now that they're in your tank, how are there more and more that keep popping up? So you counted 10 one day, and the next day you have 30. So the Astriana starfish can reproduce by fragmentation, which is literally splitting of their bodies. So they'll lose a couple of legs, and those two legs will grow and mature into a bigger five to six leg starfish. That's why a lot of times you'll see two legged starfish roaming around, or some that have three dominant legs, and the other two look like he just got cut off. That's how they're reproducing. Even though these tiny starfish have short lives, they reproduce so fast it can quickly overtake your tank. Now the big question comes into play, are they good or bad for my tank? And we'll specifically talk about a reef tank because in a fowler, you really don't have to worry about them. So are they going to mess with your fish? No. If there is an Asterina starfish eating a fish, it's because that fish has perished and it's down there in the sand bed and they're going to clean it up. Now, the big question, are they going to mess with my corals? So, the family of the Asterinidae has a ton of variations of Asterina starfish, to which some believe that there are a couple in that family that will eat corals. So, I'll give you my honest opinion. Nine times out of ten, you do not have the type of Asterina starfish that's going to eat your corals. In all my years of reef keeping, I've actually not seen these starfish eat any corals, nor inverts in person. You can use my current 75 gallon reef tank as an example. I'm overran with these starfish. You can count a hundred of them at a time, no joke. And my family loves them, so I'll just let them be. And I'll list the kinds of corals I have in this tank. So we got bubble anemones, mushrooms, recordias, leathers like cabbage and Kenya trees, euphilias like frog spawn, GSP, different types of zoas and pallies, and even a couple of SPS corals. And none of them show any kind of damage from the starfish over the years that I've had the tank. So, in my opinion, when I see these in someone's tank, I usually think it's because they got a mature reef with plenty of nutrition for them to feed on and reproduce from. Now, let's say you really do end up with a nightmare scenario of some Asterina starfish eating your corals. What you need to do to prevent this is to study your corals you will know if they're getting eaten. If it's an LPS, it's going to look a little shrunk up or some of the skeleton might be starting to expose and looking very, very white and almost bleached on the edges. If it's euphilia, you're going to see the inside of that branch where the head of the coral used to be is actually turning white as well and you can start to see that skeleton. If it's polyps, keep count of your colonies. You'll notice when it goes from 15 heads of zoas to five, that's an issue or the heads of the polyps are staying closed up all the time. With SPS corals, they will look bleached in certain areas where they've been eaten. So if you notice 
half of your SPS looks great, and then a couple of branches on the right side are looking bleached, start paying attention. Once you're noticing that, then it's time to take some action. Luckily, these are very easy to manually remove. You can unsuction their legs from the glass, sand, or rock fairly easily. Dump them when you do a water change. Only problem with this is, like you can see in my tank, there's hundreds of them. I mean, you could pick all day long and then come back the next day and look like you did not even make a dent in the tank. The other route is getting a predator. The most popular one is the harlequin shrimp. These are one of the most stunning inverts to me. They look incredible and they will eat the fire out of Astrina starfish. A couple of things to keep in mind with this shrimp. It is an invert, so you want to acclimate them slow. And you want to make sure you don't have any invert eating fish in your reef. So some people have triggers or large wrasse, puffers that are swimming great in their reef. And they're going to see this shrimp as a snack. So you will not want to waste your money by putting one of these in there and then he just gets eaten. Also, you need to realize that it will eat all types of starfish, not just specifically the Astrina starfish. They are actually just eating starfish in general. So if you end up having a tank where you have a very special starfish like the blue linkias or some of them red spotted starfish, they're going to see those as snacks too. So be careful about where you want to put them in. Make sure you have all the right setup for them and make sure you're not going to lose some money putting them in there. There are other cases of fish and inverts you can get to eat these starfish like the six line wrasse. I've seen people talking about bumblebee snails that eat them, but in most cases, those other types you can try just get used to eating food from you and they don't bother going after the starfish, especially even the six line in my tank. I've never seen him pick at one of these starfish because he knows I'm feeding him. That's why the harlequin shrimp is such a popular go-to and the one I always try to recommend because starfish is the sole thing that they want to eat. So some fun facts about the Astrina starfish is regeneration. So these starfish are capable of regenerating their arms and in some cases can even regenerate their entire body just from a single arm. So you want to make sure if you're trying to get them out of there manually, you need to get the whole starfish out. Color morphs is another really cool thing that you can watch on them. Some species show a variety of color morphs and color pattern changes depending on the environment that they're in, the light levels and available food sources. So the ones in my tank show a lot of blues on them. And in your tank, they might show a lot of oranges, and it's all just based around the environment that they're in. So it's pretty cool. They also can have symbiotic relationships with certain organisms, such as sponges or even corals, where they're going to feed on the debris and the detritus that collects on their surface. So you have things like GSP, where you have other kinds of sponges in the tank that don't get a lot of flow, and they end up having detritus grow on them. These starfish can actually get on there and clean it up. So there you have it, Astrina starfish, while they're often considered a hitchhiker in your tank, they can be a great addition to the mature reef aquarium where they help with algae and detritus cleanup. But if you are dealing with an overpopulation or the nightmare scenario of them eating your corals, don't panic because there's ways to manage them. Keep an eye on your corals first for any signs of damage. And if things get out of hand, you can always go the manual removal route or bring in a harlequin shrimp to take care of the problem for you. Remember, these little guys are part of a balanced ecosystem, and as long as they're not causing harm, they can thrive right alongside your fish and corals. Whether they're your friends or foes, just know how to handle them. The last key thing that I'll say is with the harlequin shrimp, if they do end up wiping out the population of starfish in your tank, just realize that they might perish if you're not able to give them more starfish to eat, because it's one of the only things they actually go after. Thanks for tuning in. Hope this helps you better understand these tiny tank invaders. If you have any questions or experience with the Astrina starfish, drop a comment below so other people can learn from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes of All About. And as always, stay safe, be kind, and I'll see y'all later. Merry Christmas.